YouTube, hi, my name is Mark. This is Nixon Motorsports. This channel is all about motorsports from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. Today's video, we will be installing our new 2021 ZX10R motorcycle engine into our Formula race car. So I thought I'd bring you along to show you the steps on the way, okay? So let me pan down and show you um, what we'll be doing today. So this is the prepped and ready Dynode 2021 ZX10R engine. It's all fitted with uh, BRD dry sump and so on. So this engine, and here's the spar. That's what I call it. This is the rear end of the race car. Here's the spar itself that mates up to the back of the engine. And these items will be mounted, installed right here. So here's the rear end of my race car. The car's in pieces at the moment, uh, but the engine will mount in here, and then the spar will, will bolt up to the motor. So lots of work. Let me show you the steps on the way, okay? Come on. So as I'm uh, picking up the engine here, I just pause for a minute, and I just use uh, an A-frame lift that I have. Um, so getting ready to get the motor in, um, pretty straightforward actually. Um, I do have a fitting, the oil um, fitting for the cooler that I do need to um, install here in the bottom of the engine. I don't have a dry brake on that, uh, which would be very convenient of course to not make a mess. Um, but I don't just because I don't want to have to worry about uh, um, oil flow and so on. So anyway, I'll get that line on and then I'll be able to roll this thing forward, okay? Okay, so at this point I have the oil line fitting that I was telling you about. So this is one of the high pressure uh, lines itself for the external oil cooler. Um, with this in place, I'm able to load, lower the motor in place and uh, start to bolt this thing up. So. Let's go ahead and do that, okay? So I have the motor just sat in here. Um, I went ahead and and uh, bolted up or added this uh, uh, second line for the oil cooler itself. And it's just sitting in place at the moment, but you can kind of get an idea um, how the motor sits inside its uh, cradle here. So um, before I start putting bolts and whatever not in here to mount it, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, this small little device. Um, this is the fitting that goes into the oil pan itself. If you can see, it's got double O-rings and the oil tank actually is on the back side of this. I, will, I go ahead and I use this uh, Molly coat um, around the uh, O-rings themselves just, uh, just to you know, make sure it uh, seats and seals correctly. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll start to put a few bolts on these, this motor and uh, show you the steps. Okay, so we'll continue uh, on the install here. Um, for the moment, I just have this, uh, the back of the engine kind of propped up here. Um, I have the front two mounts in place and I uh, put the throttle bodies on, as you can see, and uh, got the, uh, one of the, uh, the silicon hoses in place for the um, external water pump, which is electric. So it's coming together. Um, one thing I'll do here next is I'll install a heat shield. And um, I, I always replace these after uh, I do a motor change. Here you can see a heat shield that was in the last, uh, the last engine. Uh, it's, it's seen better days. Uh, and uh, here's, here's a brand new one. Let me show you what we do with these. And um, basically, all it is, it's a heat blanket. It goes against the engine like this, and then you mount your headers, and um, it just helps protect uh, the heat, the barrier inside the, the engine bay, that's all. So let's get that in, um, and then I'll get, uh, get to the spar, and get the spar bolted up here to the back of the engine, okay? So I wanna show you um, the process of mating um, again, the rear end of the car, I call this the spar. Um, this is part of the chassis itself, holds the diff, um, all the uh, suspension, uh, A-arms and such on the rear of the car, right? So this 
if you can see this, actually slides forward and this is the oil tank here and it mates, there's a fitting down on the bottom of it, you can't quite see if I get low enough, you probably can, there it is, um, that actually mates here with that, with that tube and adapter. So anyway, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a two person step here, but a little bit of a um, um, inch by inch, you kind of roll it forward and um, get it mated. So let me show you what that looks like. So as I uh, continue to mount the, the spar to the engine, this gives you, uh, I think, an idea of what it's gonna look like. Uh, it's not bolted up completely yet. Um, got quite a few different pieces to go on yet, a couple bolts and so on, but that gives you an idea what this looks like as it, when it mates to, uh, to the engine itself. So let me keep going, I'll uh, bring you back. Yeah, so I uh, got a lot of work yet, um, but let me show you where we're at. I got um, the motor mostly mounted. Um, I have a few uh, um, bolts and such here on the spar that I need to take care of, but I did get the throttle bodies on. I have my um, upper strut here for support that's mounted, and these are the uh, pneumatic valve um, control modules for the shifter system. Have my clutch cylinder in place, um, and I did go ahead and get the headers installed uh, so you can see how they look inside the engine bay. And um, let's see, let's roll to this side. Uh, the water lines are all in, uh, so you can see how that's set up. Here's, the, um, here's that external thermostat that I use, um, and I did that just so I have easy access to it. And uh, that's about it. That gives you an idea of kind of where we're at. Uh, in uh, getting this thing uh, put back together, okay? All right, so I made a little progress. I have uh, the rest of the exhaust in, as you can see. The headers are in place. Again, none of the wiring is done yet. The engine is um, fully bolted into the, uh, the chassis, um, the engine itself and the spar here in the rear. I've added the diffuser, which is this rear... Um, rear body, body part actually. And um, next up, I'm going to go ahead and get my chain installed. So once I do the chain, I can then mount the, um, the pneumatic actuator for the gear shift assembly and so on, okay? So if you haven't seen um, a chain uh, being installed, it's, it's not a big deal. There's just a few little things that you need to think about. Um, the right chain is important too, and I'll show you what I use here in a minute, but I use a, um, a 530 chain, uh, and this is the rivet master link type. So you have to have some type of, let me pan down here, some type of, of, uh, uh, chain break and a riveting tool. And this is the one that I use myself. Here is an example of the master link. And you can see the O-rings, uh, you have a little lube and the end plate. And this will actually be riveted on the chain itself. Let me walk over here and show you. Um, so this chain I've actually used, it's, it's actually, uh, it doesn't have much time on it. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse this. This is the old master link. You can see here where I've actually uh, ground off the, the rivet head. I'll use that tool, I'll, I'll push this pin out uh, so I can actually uh, reuse this chain, okay? So this is the uh, chain brake tool that, it, that I talked about. Um, and I'm gonna use this to go ahead and push this pin out. And you can see, um, or maybe you can't, but basically you have this small little die here in the bottom. You can spin that around for rivet, for brake, and so on. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, you'll, if I can do it with one hand here, you'll actually place it on the chain and then um, you'll press it through. So let me get this mounted. So that is what uh, the breaker tool looks like um, when you install it on the chain. Now, I just placed it uh, in place here and you can sort of see there's a pin. This, 
you'll tighten it up here and then this end actually you'll tighten all the way in and it pushes that pin all the way through to release that uh, master chain that's all that is so let me go ahead and get this off and get the chain on the car and i'll take it from there okay so i have the master link off with the chain and uh, before i put it on the car um, and i do this with a new chain by the way i actually use turpentine and i clean the chain so might seem a little odd um, but uh, for a lot of you bike guys you probably do this as well so these chains when they come um, um, out of the uh, out of the box right they're gooped up with all kinds of lube and everything else and um, what's irritating you you get that in the race car and you have goop and stuff all over the place right so um, what I do at least is I I use turpentine to thoroughly clean the chain um, and then I apply a wax based um, coating so I use this chain wax by um, Maxima on the chain it seems to work really well um, so that's what I use it's nice and dry um, seems to work well now these chains and these type of race cars you know they don't last for years and years right uh, some guys say they'll they can push them for a season I personally think that um, well I don't do that um, I've gone through a lot of chains, tried different manufacturers, um, different grades and qualities, um, and I ended up with a 530 chain for, for the F1000. And here's the chain that I use. Uh, this is the, an RK chain. Uh, this is the ZXW uh, chain itself. This has the highest uh, uh, tensile strength of any chain that I could find. And um, I would highly recommend it. These things, these chains, um, I can put them on. They don't stretch hardly at all. They seem to last uh, for as long as I feel like having the chain on the car, to be honest with you. Um, but out of just, you know, preventative maintenance, I, I typically will replace a chain um, after maybe two races at the most. Uh, sometimes I'll do it every race weekend. Um, I do that just for uh, grins and safety. Uh, so anyway, that's it on the chain. Um, let's get it on the car, and then I'll show you, show you what it looks like uh, fully installed, okay? So, I know that's got to come up a bit, so let's try that angle. Yeah, closer. If I can find the right tool, that would help. So all I'm going to do, my uh, J-arm here is, needs to be adjusted. Here, let me show you. So basically, here's the actuator for shifting. And I only have so much stroke here, right? It's like a two-inch stroke, roughly. So i got to have that J-arm up a little higher. Um, that's all. So not a big deal. I, mistake when I put that on so I'm just loosening these up if I can get to it see me but um, I had to adjust this a little bit I put a couple spacers in here to get this perpendicular with the shaft you got to watch that because if it binds um, it even though it's strong as a high pressured uh, pneumatic system it, it still makes shifting a problem so anyway got the actuator in place um, just kind of moving some brake lines around uh, this is uh, wiring that I need to do for the um, the load, the, the new strain gauge sensors that are back here. So that's a later item. For the moment, I'm just trying to get the basic engine in place and get the wiring on for the motor. Uh, today, I'd like to be able to get the motor fired up. So what I'm going to do now is um, start getting the wiring placed on the motor first. It's okay. So um, just kind of an update. Progress wise, uh, I'm trying to get the wiring harness in place here. Um, it's a mess, it takes me a few minutes. Once I get the, uh, the engine's wiring harness in place, um, you know, we'll put some oil in this thing, uh, water and such, we'll get it ready so we can actually fire it up, see what this thing uh, sounds like, okay? on 
finish up the wiring motor wise. Should be able to fire it up relatively quick after prying the oil, all that fun stuff. That's right. It's always fun you fire up a new motor though. So somebody's on the back side of this camera, he's just not saying anything. He's quiet. He's incognito. So my brother's out here helping this weekend. So say hi Eddie. Hello. Well the engine is in and um, let me pan around here, you can see, have not fired this up yet. Uh, got a little oil in it, uh, have water in it. Just wanna show, show you what it looks like once we get this thing fired up, um, appropriate amount of oil, that kind of thing. I'll uh, let you hear this thing run, but uh, some touch up items still, but this is the 2021 motor fresh, only dyno time on it, so we'll see what it sounds like. All right, fire away. enjoyed this that is uh, a wrap-up for this video this is the installation of the uh, the new 2021 ZX10 R motor in the race car um, you heard it run a little bit so just let it get up to temperature you know bleed um, you know the, the water system you know oil levels that kind of thing um, I hope you found this of interest and I uh, got a handful of videos yet to come you're gonna see one uh, shortly on the installation of the strain gauges um, on the vehicle that's for um, more accurate uh, downforce for each corner of the car and um, I'll have another video shortly again on the um, the wireless steering wheel hub that I've talked about so that both of those are, are in their final stages so you'll see those over the next few weeks anyway that's it thank you for supporting this channel and uh, shoot your comments along one last thing I got to do a special call out to our family members in Australia um, you guys know who you are and uh, you've been watching the channel uh, religiously and uh, I just want to tell you I appreciate that and so uh, this video is for you okay that's it ciao